Hi guys, I'm Chris with Calimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my clickety clackety V4R. We're going to go for a ride and I have a little topic we're going to go over and that is whether or not a bike like this can be a daily rider. I've actually gotten that question a good bit here recently and as someone that has dailyed an 1199 Panigale, 1299 Panigale and a V4, I can kind of lend some insight. So let's go for a ride and talk about it. So obviously the short answer to whether or not a bike like this can be a daily rider is, yeah, of course, anything can be made into and be used as a daily rider. Like I said, I had an 1199 that I daily rode in Arizona during the summer through city streets like this where it's stop and go. You can do it. Now, <laughs> what do you need to consider if you decide to do that, what do you actually need to think about? Well, one, super bikes like these really benefit from good tires. And what happens when you put on track ready type tires? Well, they're, they're super sticky. They don't last very long. Which means you don't get the mileage out of them that you would uh, one of those more all around type tires. Like, because I use probably P0, Super Corsa, right now V3, I'm trying to get my hands on V4s. Um, but they're an SC2, so they're that's mild compound. I'm actually, for this upcoming track day in March, I'm gonna have an SC1 for front, an SC2 in the rear. Let's we'll see how that goes. But I'm like, without a track day or track days, I'm usually 3,000 miles, maybe, to a set of tires. Now, that's like with regular riding and stuff. Nothing nothing too crazy, but up and down the mountain or through Gates Pass like I do. But if you throw a track day in there, you go down to like, what am I at, 1,000 miles right now? I think I'm at like 14, 1,500 miles on a set of tires. And honestly, I'm a little, they're a little lower than I like them to normally be. So I, I probably should have changed them out, I don't know, 200 miles ago, maybe. Eh, not that far, maybe like, maybe like now I would want to change them. But I'm, I'm waiting to change them because I don't want to throw on a new set of tires right around the street and not use them for the track. So that's something I consider is what type of running you're going to do and the type of tires. Now you might be saying, well, just get a more durable tire or something that's gonna last a good bit longer and I know there's stuff out there however something you gotta think about is you have a 200 190 whatever horsepower bike do you really want to put on a set of tires that aren't that grippy or that take a long time to warm up or you know don't really provide the feel of softer compound tires like when you're trying to brake while well, going around some canyons and whatnot usually not you you like that feel that you get from the front end of a good set of tires and that that uh, confidence you get by having sticky tires that, you know, stick, they're grippy. So that's something to consider is what type of tires you want to use. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fucking craters. <laughs> talk about, talk about freaking uh, tires right there. Holy crap. <laughs> so on that point, if you're gonna daily ride, you gotta look out for shit like that. A set of rims for this V4R, uh, the fronts were $2,900, cause I actually had them replaced already. Uh, that was due to it falling over in a transport situation. It sucked, but it is what it is. Um, so you gotta look at that, just the wear and tear of tires and having to dodge stuff. It's expensive on bikes like these. Now on the maintenance front, something else you have to consider is the maintenance intervals. Again, bikes like these, while the maintenance isn't astronomically expensive, when you're riding it all the time, you know, oil changes are around four or 500 bucks. They do it yourself, sure, go ahead and do that. But when they're new and they're under warranty, Ducati likes having that, that paperwork. So that's something to consider.
And when you're riding them all the time, you're gonna be doing maintenance more often. This dry clutch is not cheap to maintain should you need to replace it. Interesting. So that's something else you gotta think about is, you know, what is the cost of maintenance on a bike that you ride every day? Because this isn't my, you know, like everyday thing, it's a weekend warrior, track day warrior, what have you. It's not something that requires as frequent maintenance. Like I can go several months before needing to do anything. Whereas if you're riding every day, it's gonna be several weeks. Consider that. And then something to consider, because I, um, this has a static suspension, meaning you have to change it yourself, manual suspension, whatever you want to call it. So if you set it up for you as a rider for the, sh for the track itself, you're more than likely going to be a good bit more stiff than if you just kind of set it up or if you just left it alone or had an electronic suspension like I, I normally do with the uh, V4S's and whatnot I, I like the electronic suspension because they're dynamic they're, they change the environment you can sort of set them on the fly they're more forgiving on the street so a bike like this has got a stack suspension that's something you need to consider if you want to daily it maybe you want that electric suspension to consistently change like the DDC that's on the BMW is fantastic. It's, it has been for years, and it's only gotten better and better. So the type of suspension that are on these bikes may not lend to something you want to daily all the time. I, this suspension I've, I've mentioned before isn't that bad as far as how stiff it is and unforgiving it is. The 1199 that I have was far more harsh than what this is, surprisingly, but it's definitely not as soft as what the V4S was or the 1299 uh, Anniversario was that I had because of the electronic suspension. It was dialed in a little bit better and you could definitely soften it up. Whereas this, this, is, this really only gets more stiff from here. If you soften it up too much, you're gonna ruin the handling of it. Something else to consider is the usability. You know, I have to wear a book bag when I ride this thing and it's got my laptop for work. It's got, you know, I got to stack my lunch in there. I got to do a bunch of things to carry with me. And it's not, it's not very ergonomical. It doesn't feel good to be on your hands and then have a 10, 15 pound book bag on your back and be on your wrist. It's just not, it's not enjoyable. That's why I don't really ride to work. On top of that, I just, I like the creature comforts of a vehicle. It's just me. But you got to think about, you know, do you need to bring changes of clothes when you go to work? Do you want to smell like a bike? You know, stuff like that. Then you got to think of the driving or riding characteristics of the bike, meaning is the throttle twitchy, the brake super touchy? Does it get hot like this V4 does? You got to think of those types of things. Do you really want to ride a bike daily that is just super high strung and requires you to be super fine on your inputs on a stop and go situation when you're riding through traffic or on your daily commute this thing does get hot so obviously if you ride through the city and again i'm here in arizona if you don't know arizona it gets rather warm in the summer like i'm talking 115 110 is my cutoff for riding i don't ride above that it's just it becomes dangerous to me especially if i gotta go through traffic uh, heat exhaustion happens very quickly not a fan. Um, so yeah, you gotta think of the riding characteristics of bikes like these. You know, again, the S1000RR, I keep going back to it because it is a much more forgiving motorcycle. It's got cruise control, heat of grips, a lot more creature comforts, and it is more comfortable overall. Bikes like the Yamaha R1, uh, ZX10Rs, they're kind of in between like this and that. I, I do think the R1 is far more risky, so you're, you're much 
more over the front of the bike, so it's it's even more aggressive of a position than this. The Aprilia's, uh, the rear sets are high, so there's a lot of a lot of ground clearance when you're dragging knee and whatnot. But on the street, I actually had hip cramps, freaking trying to put my feet up on the pegs because they are a good bit higher. It's a very cramped cockpit once you're riding. And then like I was going back to the Kawasaki's, um, they're one of those bikes that require a lot of revs. So when you're just kind of cruising around town, you kind of got to be in a higher gear to get the revs and everything going on it. And is that something you really want to do when you're just kind of cruising to and from work? So I hope you all enjoyed this video and the riding with me through the Tucson streets. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. Please comment the most. Give me your reactions. Definitely interactions with me and commenting back and forth really helps drive the channel and really bring it back and put it into YouTube's algorithm. Because for whatever reason, it seems like YouTube has decided that Calvin Motor TV is not to be pushed on the platform very much. And we like to fix that. Again, I'm here to help and keep Calvin Motor TV going and help build out with this wonderful channel and then create this fantastic duo of motorcycle youtubery and also car youtubery we, you know we do both i guess one of the last things to consider when when trying to ride a bike like this as a daily rider is how much are you going to want to actually go to and from work on bikes that are this fun and this exhilarating to ride I mean, I feel like you're gonna make yourself late for work on a regular basis. Like you just wanna go and ride and then there's nothing more sad than going for a ride and then having to freaking stop soon because you're going just to work on a road like this through traffic. This isn't fun. It's not what this bike is, what gives me the joy of riding. Like I like going out the twisties, I like going to the track. To and from work is nah. So, Think about that. Before you get a bike like this, as a daily rider, as your only bike, consider the points I made. Yes, you can do it. I've done it. But as I've uh, matured, it's definitely not something I want to keep doing or I won't keep doing because, uh, you know, there are other bikes out there that are far better suited for that type of riding. And I highly recommend those types of bikes. So with that, thanks for riding along with me. I'm coming into gear shifters here because 520 Moto is having a little meet up, a little high. We're still around. My 520 Moto Alliance is a nonprofit motorcycle club that I used to be a board member of. And, um, you know, they just kind of meet up and they want to get people riding again, get the community back and whatnot. And there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good little turnout here. I like it. Hello! <laughs>